Ugh. Mm. Nightmares. We all have them at one point or another in our lives, and we can't exactly fight back when it comes to them. We usually have to deal with our nightmares, whether we like it or not. Not unless you're armed with a Nerf gun and have blue striped pajamas, which just so happens to be what you have in Billy's Nightmare. This is a brand new roguelike that will see you delving deep into the realms of dreams and nightmares as you try and stop the big spook himself, the Boogeyman. So with all that said, make sure you go ahead and brush your teeth and grab yourself your favorite stuffed pal to sleep with, and while you're at it, grab yourself a nice cozy pillow, because it's time for us to take a snooze cruise into the world of Billy's Nightmare. So, as the game begins, you find yourself in a child's bedroom, lotted with toys and other things that you would find at a child's age like Billy's. There's not a whole lot to do here at the very start, so you kind of just mosey on around till you find a pillow that you're going to need to go to sleep. But as you approach it, a trapdoor opens beneath you, and you find yourself falling into the dream world, where you meet the Sandman. The Sandman confides in you that nightmares are spreading all throughout the dream realm. He also warns of an artifact known as the Dream Catcher, that if in the wrong hands, could bring devastation to all the dreams throughout the world. With this knowledge, you proceed to try and secure the Dream Catcher. But before you can secure the artifact, you're thrown into battle against the big spook himself, the Harbinger of Nightmares, the Boogeyman. This is actually a really awesome fight, and it's not all that difficult, but it gets you accustomed to the controls in a really cool, unique way, while still moving the story forward. However, before you can finally lay the final blow against the Boogeyman, he escapes with the Dreamcatcher in tow. And now it's your job to retrieve the artifact before the Boogeyman can escape from the dream reality into the real world. And so, your journey begins. And right off the bat, this is a pretty awesome setup. In fact, Billy's Nightmare gives a very great first impression. The very first area you're introduced to is where the Sandman resides, and it acts as this awesome tutorial section. But what's really cool is that this tutorial section is completely optional, and the boss fight against the Boogeyman also acts as its own tutorial for combat, and it's just very well done. I've always been a big fan of a game introducing the big bad right at the start as a boss to fight, and it gets you accustomed to the controls and makes you feel like you have a genuine chance against the foe, until it's revealed later that you just fought a very weak form of the final boss, and the boss has way more tricks up his sleeve which we'll encounter later down the road. And this is the case with Billy's Nightmare. As after that encounter, we can see the Boogeyman holding the artifact in his hands as it slowly changes him into a new form, but, of course, we don't see that form fully realized till later in the game. But that, of course, is not the only thing going for Billy's Nightmare, as this game has a very striking, pixelated art style. Graphically speaking, the game looks great, and the style that it goes for teeters the line between child-friendly, while also having elements that dwarf that childhood innocence into something far darker and more menacing. Like how enemies you might face look like harmless toys, but once you kill them, blood splatters from their bodies all over the place. And this gruesome and gory style can also be seen in bosses, especially boss deaths. And you know what, the best words that could describe Billy's Nightmare would be gruesome yet charming. And because of that, it gives it a one-of-a-kind feel, and you will not mistake this game for any other. The stage variety and the themes are also just a blast. As with this setup being in the dream world, you're actually delving into your very own nightmares, and the Boogeyman is using those internal nightmares for each stage. The first area you end up is a toy box of sorts, where you go against a plethora of toys all being dwarfed by the nightmarish power of the Boogeyman. There's also an entire school level which features enemies that all fit that very theme, like bullies, jocks, bad math teachers, principals, and then a final area which features a whole movie studio, fitting the whole scary movie motif. Each of these stages, in an odd way, kind of ends up allowing the player to relate to them, because let's be honest, we've all had some kind of fear about one of these when relating back to our childhoods. Whether it's a bully we had nightmares about, whether it's a scary movie that kept us up at night, all these stages do a great job reflecting the theme and ideas of a child's nightmare, and I really have to give props to Santa Games for that. And like I said, the music also backs all these themes up. When in combat, the music picks up, making things feel very intense and very stressful, and when things calm down, the tempo of the actual music doesn't exactly relax you. Instead, it plays a somewhat uneasy tone, as you know there could very well be more nightmares around the next corner. Overall, from the intro of the game and its presentation, Billy's Nightmare already is taking a great first step. And guess what? The positives don't stop there. I'm sure this is going to become very apparent for anyone that's ever played a game like this, but if you haven't and you're uninitiated, Billy's Nightmare is a roguelike. Now, if you don't know, roguelikes are a procedurally generated dungeon crawl type game, where each room and enemy encounter is completely randomized, and upon death, it's permadeath, meaning you lose all your progress, and when you go back through it again, no rooms or enemy encounters will be the same. 
Now, with that being said, I'd also like to preface this. I myself have never even played a roguelike until Billy's Nightmare came along, as I played the demo when it first came out. And from the demo and its full release, this game feels amazing. The controls are snappy and sharp. You will always feel like you have control in every single instance. And anytime you receive a death, you will honestly feel like it's your own fault because you could have done better. You have the ability to dodge and roll through enemy attacks, the ability to consistently fire your weapon in any of all 360 directions towards any enemy as you move around. And this game is very heavy on both movement and dodging, as this is not only a roguelike, but also a straight up bullet hell. Think of something like Binding of Isaac. Furthermore, to add icing onto the cake, this game also has controller support, which I am a huge fan of and I think should just be standard. And the best part about all this is that the buttons are fully remappable, meaning that you can make Billy's Nightmare feel and play exactly the way you want. With the snappy controls and how well it all feels, as well as the extreme agility of Billy, you will always have extreme control over any battlefield, with the only true caveat to that being your own skill and how careful you are when dodging. Sure, you can spaz the dodge button to get out of a sticky situation, but it's not always the best option. You could very well run into an enemy or get comboed by taking lots of hits. So don't think you're going to be dark souling your ways out of any combat scenarios trying to dodge all over the place, as you can't even fire your weapon while you're dodging. So you're going to have to get used to dodging bullets, learning enemy patterns, and finding the right times to hit your targets. But with these smooth controls, all of that is very much doable, and it all comes down to player skill. And as far as attack goes, Billy has several options. He has the main singular attack, which has about a few second cooldown, where he shoots a single projectile to do consistent damage. Now, if you want a lot of damage all at once, and or want to take care of a massive horde of enemies, Billy also has a shotgun blast, but this has a longer cooldown, so if you use it, you're not going to be able to use it again for a good handful of seconds. So, you should definitely use this with the utmost care, and or use it when you're trying to take out a really nasty enemy that gives you a lot of trouble. But what would a dungeon crawler be without a plethora of different abilities to use? Between firework RPGs, ice cubes, basketballs, meteorites, and stinky socks, there is an absolute truckload of different special abilities to use, each of them offering different properties, as well as a different style of play. At any given time, Billy can have two special abilities on hand at once, and you're able to stockpile a lot of abilities in your inventory and swap to them at any given time. You can get these abilities through either doing special side quests and or buying them at the Tooth Fairy shop. However, you cannot change your ability during mid-combat, so you kind of have to pre-plan for things or kind of decide how you want your playstyle to be. Now, something to keep in mind is the fact that all these abilities do have a cooldown period, so you can't just spaz them all the time, and you need to be pretty picky with how you use them, as you can find yourself in a pretty rough spot if you use up all your abilities and you're getting surrounded. But the point is, is that there are so many abilities in this game that it offers a huge amount of options for players with different playstyles. But that's not the only firepower that Billy has at his disposal, as Billy also has access to pets. There are multiple pets throughout the game, and you can gain them through doing several things, whether it's buying them at the shop, getting them at the lost and found, or again, doing random side quests. These pets are awesome, and they offer a great extra hand in combat, however, they also have their own health bars, and if you're not careful, and you end up leaving your pet to defend themselves, you can find out that they ended up dying in combat. So it's best to definitely keep a really close eye on pet health, as well as make sure to stay close to them so you can defend them against enemy fire. Now of course, with all the different ways that he has to engage in combat, you need to have a big enemy pool in order to make that worth the player's while. And Billy's Nightmare offers that in spades. In each of the level themes, you will find a variety of enemies that fit the theme of that area. Some enemies will only do melee damage and will try to get in close and be extremely fast, while others are more lighter enemies that shoot just basic projectiles. Now, things will eventually ramp up the deeper you get into the nightmare, you'll come across medium and heavy enemy variants. These guys will all end up packing an even bigger punch, all while having the ability to shoot more projectiles in wider patterns. Now, these enemies on their own aren't too major of a threat. The real issue is when they are in big groups, and that is how you'll end up encountering all these enemy types. Every room you enter will cause a massive enemy wave, and there are normally about one to three waves per room. Each wave will spawn a plethora of enemies in a different variety, from heavy enemy types to light enemy types to medium, and they will try and swarm you with an array of different attacks. Trying your best not to get cornered and staying mobile while dealing damage when you have the chance is the best way to make as much progress as possible through this game. 
because the riskier you play, the tougher things will get. And when you take damage, it's not as simple as going to pick up an easy health pack to replenish it. If you do end up taking damage in this game, you'll have to pick up Z pills. These pills will restore your health, but you can only get them in the shop and or if you can find them by doing special quests. They are very few and far between, so taking damage is a serious issue. Now with this being a roguelike, everything is randomized. Level layout, room layout, enemy spawn locations, everything. No matter how many times you load this game up, your route through it will be completely different. The main objective is to find the staircase to get to the second floor and then find the boss room. But the only way to make any progress is to go through room by room, and once you enter a room, you're stuck in that room until you clear all the enemy waves and take them all down so you can then progress forward. Now thankfully, like I alluded to earlier in this video, there are a lot of other rooms to explore, like the Tooth Fairy Shop. The Tooth Fairy Shop is one of the best areas of the game, and every zone will have at least one Tooth Fairy Shop on either of the two floors. This shop will provide you with an array of items that are always randomized between each zone, as well as in between each run of the game, that you can end up purchasing. There are also other rooms, for example, the Easter Bunny's room, which provides you an actual Easter egg that has one random special item. There's also the Pirate's room, which also offers you another shop with another array of items to choose from. You can also find the Santa Claus room, which provides a bit of a mini side quest where you need to bring an elf found in the Tooth Fairy shop back to him, and then you'll receive special items after doing that quest. And these are just some of the rooms you may find during your run. However, even with all these special rooms and the amazing abilities you can gain from going through them, Billy's Nightmare still stays a major challenge, and the best example of that is the bosses. At the end of each zone, you'll find a boss, and to make matters even worse for the player, that boss can end up being randomized between several different variants, each with their own unique patterns and attacks. These bosses are bullet hells to the max. They start off easy for sure, but later down the road, they will get harder and harder. And to make matters worse, bosses are immune to certain effects, like the scary mask and ice cubes, meaning that combo is useless. So it's always a good practice to go ahead and equip your highest attack power special abilities before going into a boss fight. Now once you're finally able to take down this boss at whatever means are at your disposal, you'll be granted a golden star, which can be used for buying costumes that all have their own cool special abilities, which we'll get to later. You also get a bit of dialogue from Sandman, and a special reward chest at the end, normally providing extra health pills and a special item. And once you've finally surpassed all three of the major areas, you finally find yourself at the bottom of the dream, where the nightmare resides. You're shown a very hellish and dark landscape, filled with lava, and on the map it shows right off the bat, a massive arena is ahead of you. You are offered the ability to purchase supplies or health items before the big boss fight, but once you enter it, there's no going back. Now, keep in mind we are officially entering big spoiler territory, so if you don't want to get spoiled, go ahead and skip to the time card that's on screen right now. Otherwise, let's get into it. And this is when you finally come across the Boogeyman. The Boogeyman's body has been completely dwarfed from the very start of the game, as now he's equipped with a metallic spider-like lower half to his body, and has become extremely buff. Damn, bro, let me get some of the gains. Where normally you, as the player, normally have complete battlefield control, especially with special abilities, the Boogeyman runs this field. He has the ability to spawn massive meteorites, explosive projectile shots, summoning tons of different enemy types at his whim. He can summon random objects to throw at you, as well as protect himself. This dude is a serious threat, and will test your skills tenfold. And to make matters worse, the stakes have never been higher, because if you die now, you lose all your progress and end up back at the start of the game and do it all over again. The Boogeyman is a true testament to the difficulty in Billy's Nightmare, and really keeps you on your toes. Trying to watch and learn his patterns, putting yourself in good positions to do damage while making sure you stay safe, while also making sure not to stay in one place for too long, it will test every skill that you have obtained up to this point. And it honestly is a really good boss fight. That's not even to mention the fact that he has extreme movement speed and a stupidly high health pool. But, once you finally take him down, you finally retrieve the Dreamcatcher, allowing Billy to finally wake up in peace and end up back at Sandman's place for an awesome little party. And this is really cool, because it gives you the ability to interact with all of the characters that you've met up to this point. Honestly, the end game is just really enjoyable and offers a ton of sweet personality, and it's charming. Like, th that's the best way to put it, it's just charming. Now, you might think I'm finally done with all the praise. Well, you would be wrong. Billy's Nightmare has an insane amount of replayability. You have the ability to play co-op with your friends. There's one-hit mode, where one hit is permadeath. 
there's the VIP room, which you get access to after you beat the game, and slowly upgrade this room to have tons of access to special abilities and to streamline the process. You have the ability to gain different costumes after getting stars from each boss fight, with each costume that you obtain having their own special abilities. Like, you can literally be the Dovahkiin and ride a fucking dragon and have Fusro Da as one of your abilities. Like, that is so dope! And with the fact that every boss is randomized, you're gonna have to go through this game several times before you end up finally seeing everything. But yeah, the long short of it is that Billy's Nightmare has fantastic replayability in post-game. But with all the praise that I gave, I do have a few notes. Now with all the overwhelming praise I've been giving Billy's Nightmare, there are definite things that could be improved upon that would just make the whole experience of this game that much better. Starting off, and this is not exactly something that's a requirement by any means, and honestly it's more of a just a quality of life and something that would just add a little more spice to the game, is the ability to play with set scenes. It would allow Billy's Nightmare to have a really cool competitive scene, not to mention it also allow players that might have a rougher time with the game have an easier seat to help them out that much more. Next, having like a rookie slash easy mode, maybe something that doubles Billy's health pool or maybe doubling his damage output, something of that nature that would help more newer players to the roguelike scene be able to ease into the experience would be a nice touch and add a little more accessibility. And finally, the biggest thing that Billy's Nightmare could definitely improve on is the final area. Oh, also, we're gonna end up talking about the final area once again, including the final boss for just a little bit, so skip to the time card here to avoid spoilers. Like I said, there are only three separate zones in the game, and once you finally get to the fourth area, you just face the final boss outright, which kind of ends up meaning that you fight two bosses back to back. Now, there's nothing really wrong with this, but I honestly wanted to spend more time in the nightmare area of the game. The final area could be a three-floor gauntlet instead of the traditional two, where every enemy that you encounter is no longer the nightmares inside of Billy, but the actual pure form of a nightmare. So light enemy types, medium enemy types, and large enemy types can all have a more monster feel or maybe ghostly or phantasm feel to each of their designs. If anything, you can make these enemies more abstract, making them more dark and unpronounced with features, just like how in real life, when we're in the dark, our brain can end up tricking us by thinking shapes or monsters are there, but we can't quite make out. This area could end up becoming a gauntlet with three rooms to go through, tons of enemies to fight your way past, but also offering the player a chance to gain more supplies before the big final confrontation. As how the game is now, whatever you obtain in the third and final zone is the only thing you'll have when moving to the final area. I know adding an entire area or expanding an area is not an easy task by any means, and the game as it is now doesn't need it, but having that in there would allow the player to spend more time in the final area and give them a chance to experience a one final push to the big bad, and I think it would help the game more than harm it. Honestly, you could actually kind of make this like a DLC expansion. Maybe you can call it the Nightmare DLC, where you expand the final area of the game. I don't know, something of that nature, it would be really cool. But with all that said, that's pretty much it. The game is just about perfect, and it's a blast to play through. But with all that I've gone through and all that we've looked at, let's finally put it all together. Billy's Nightmare is a great game. It has so much personality and love put into it, and it's one of the funnest games that I've been able to play this year. It may not be extremely long, but it offers an unparalleled level of replayability. This is the perfect game to play for a first time introduction to the roguelike genre. And even if you are already experienced with roguelikes, this will still be a blast to play through either way. The game will offer up a great challenge, variety in stages, tons of different abilities to use, lots of post-game content and unlockables, lots of enemies to encounter, tons of different playstyles, and secrets to find. And I'll definitely be coming back to this game again and again because it's just so much fun. And I encourage you to check out Billy's Nightmare and show what the love and support it and its creator deserves. And for those that are interested in playing this game for themselves or wanting to show their support, the game will of course be down in the description below. Also, I'd like to take a moment to express my gratitude to Santa Games for allowing me to check out this game in early access before its big release date. For anyone watching this video before its big debut, the game will fully launch on October 26th of 2023. And for everyone else that's seeing it after the fact, again, you'll be able to find it in the description below. Billy's Nightmare is fantastic, and one that you will have a great time playing and find yourself coming back to again and again, making you want to improve your runs while also making you want to get better and more skilled as you run through the game every time. And on a final note, Billy's Nightmare is an absolute dream to play. 
And you know what? I don't think anyone that gets the chance to play this game is going to want to wake up from that dream anytime soon.